Hey y'all, today I wanted to quickly show you how I make chips out of the Joseph's Lavash bread. On Trim Healthy Mama, we have food freedom, and there is one area of freedom that I have felt not free, and that is in the department of tortilla chips. I grew up in Texas, we ate a ton of Mexican food, and chips, salsa, and guacamole are um, kind of a big deal. And if you've been on Trim Healthy Mama for any length of time, you may have also been missing chips. And I know this is nothing new. Um, lavash bread turned into, into chips is something that's been going around for a few years on Trim Healthy Mama, but I just wanted to give you a quick sort of how-to on how I make these lavash chips. It's so basic and so simple. The nice thing about these lavash breads is that half of one is still in fuel pull territory. So, I mean, you can easily add these to an e-meal without a problem, but it's those S meals where we're having things like enchiladas and um, taco skillet bakes and just all of the super cheesy, fatty, yummy, delicious Mexican food that you really want those chips and salsa. So if you stick to half of a lavash bread, you are gonna stay within fuel pool territory for these and not wind up crossing over with your S Mexican food. Also, I just like to eat them on the regular basis, so. Um, anyway, these are fairly inexpensive at my Walmart. I want to say there are less than four dollars and I'm just gonna show you how I do this. So now that I've got all of my little lavash chips on here, what I did was I um, sprayed the olive oil on the bottom, did a light sprinkle of salt on top of the olive oil, laid out my chips in a single layer, another squirt of olive oil, and my olive oil here is almost out, and then another sprinkle of salt. Let's take it to our oven that has been preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Slide them in. And now we're gonna babysit these guys. Let's start with about four minutes. So this is extremely easy. The only thing you really need is to be able to pay attention. Don't stick these in the oven and then think you've got time to run to the bathroom or tend to the baby or um, do anything else outside of the kitchen pay close, close attention to your oven. Um, I'm not one to typically set timers. I know I usually do whenever I'm showing y'all stuff just because I wanna make sure that I don't wind up wasting those ingredients. Um, 
and give y'all an idea typically of how long I do certain things. But with these, I will set the timer, even if I'm not showing y'all, because I will forget about things. I'll get to washing up a few dishes, or one of the girls will ask for some help for something, or I'll think, oh, I've got plenty of time to fold this, uh, this basket of laundry, or whatever the case may be. Um, you don't. I don't. <laughs> um, and some days it only takes four minutes to get these things to a nice light golden brown color. Other days it takes seven minutes. Um, it's just kind of a uh, all over the map type of a deal. So I'm gonna sit here and babysit these bad boys until they're done. All right, you hear it, timer's going off. Let's take a quick peek. They are not very golden yet. Um, and if we kind of jostle the pan just a little bit, um, they are starting to get a little bit crispy, but I'm going to turn my pan 180 degrees and then I'm going to watch this like a hawk for about another minute to two minutes. Okay, y'all, this is about perfect. I'm going to pull these out before they get gone too far. And I know my lighting is a little bit off because of the snow, but hopefully we can get this into some different lighting. Oh, pan popped, you know it's hot. Okay, so all of these over here are looking pretty good. These look a little bit pale, but the problem is that um, once these guys start to turn brown, they will go from pale brown to really dark brown burnt uh, in a matter of seconds. So I'm gonna redo the cycle once these have cooled down for just a few minutes except I will not respray my pan and I will not resalt my pan. I will just lay down a new batch of the lavash chips and then spray the top side of that with some olive oil, give it a light sprinkling of salt and keep going until I'm all out of lavash chips. So my first batch of lavash chips are out of my oven. I've got some here in a bowl. They are kind of more like a cross between a chip and a cracker as far as the texture is concerned, but Whenever you are on Trim Healthy Mama and you are avoiding things like corn chips and those kinds of things, you kind of miss them. And something like this that can be a vehicle for salsa or guacamole is just what the doctor ordered. So I've got some homemade salsa that Jared made us. And uh, mm. they're just such a good vehicle honestly. That's how I do my lavash chips. I store these in the pantry. They stay crunchy for me for about five days, maybe a little bit longer depending upon how far I've burnt them, <laughs> but they stay really well for us. I do not make these all the time. These are definitely a drive through Sioux type of a thing, so if you're a purist, you're probably not even gonna care about this little like how to. We like them quite a lot and I hope that this clarifies how I make them and if you feel so inclined I hope you give these a try and I will talk to y'all in the next video. Bye!